So the first thing you always do in stretching paper, and that's what this little section's on. I didn't even tell you that, you see, but it is. Stretching paper is that you draw. You draw on dry paper. You cannot draw on wet paper because it will scar the paper. It will, you can't make a good design with it. But I hold my pencil kind of like this and I'm gonna do a painting. I'm gonna do a little building that's my grandmother and grandfather's home place that I've done so many times and I still enjoy doing it. I'm gonna keep it really loose, really loose and happy and fun. I'm gonna use the tic-tac-toe and it's gonna be right here in this cross where the two lines cross, shoop, 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 remember? So I'm gonna come in here with the, the little house that grandma and grandpa lived in for many, many years. And I'm, as you can see, I'm very loosely doing this drawing. And this is window, gets the window here. We'll put this back here, put a window down there. That part of the roof comes out. You can see what a happy little drawing that is to steal something from Bob Ross. He, probably more people went to art from Bob Ross's happy little trees than than anybody. So anyhow, this is going to be my drawing. And I'm going to keep it loose around here. Boy, that is loose, Joe. And I'm going to keep it a, I'm going to keep it a uh, in this area right down here. I'm going to put a nice big pine tree back there. And another tree like that back there. Coming on down to there. Whoa, this is going to be so much fun. After I'm completed with the drawing, happy with the drawing, then I turn it over on the back side. And with my water and my water bucket here, I'm going to move it over a little closer to where I am. I simply start wetting it. Now this has a little color in it, but it won't even be show up on the painting because it's too... Now what would show up is little specks like that, so I get them off of there. One of the things to remember about this is that you can't get it too wet. You just keep going. A bigger brush would be a little better, but we're going to have it here in a minute. And uh, stretching paper is actually a misnomer. You, you don't do any stretching. But because it's cotton, it expands. So it should be called expanding paper because that's what we're doing. Now that's good and wet on the backhand side. Another way to do this is put it in your sink at home. And I have a sink that this stuff fits in and go for it. Now turn it over now so that I have the front side here. And I simply start wetting it thoroughly, get it soaked. And remember what I said, you can't get it too wet. The stretching paper goes way back. The people like Zoltan Zabo and uh, Ted Kautsky, uh, all, the, all, even Skip Lawrence. I know Skip in the beginning, when I was first with Skip, was stretching paper. Don Andrews stretched paper. So it's old and goes way back. And you can see now I've got it soaking wet. Oh, this is going to be great because I can already feel a bubble coming in right there. So when we get a bubble on it, it means the paper's expanding and it can't go anywhere on these two sides. So here's how we handle it. We come in here, lift the paper to where the bubble is and paint the gator board. Then lay the paper back down, give it little strokes like that, and there we've got it. Okay, now we're at a stage that is soaking wet. It is, it's what you would think of as stretched, but it hasn't, but it's, it's nice and smooth. I look, I don't see any more bubbles in it. And so I'm going to take the excess water off the surface. And some people say this is drying. Zoltan Zabo would have said we're going to dry the surface. But we're really not going to dry it. We're just going to take the excess water off with this Viva towel, two layers. 
And now I take with my hands in the middle of this, and I'm just putting all my weight on it. I go like that. And then I'm going to pull it down here just a little bit and get the excess water off of my gator board so I don't have any problem there. And now with my knuckles, this right here, I'm going to see if it's still, oh, it's plenty damp. But I want to show you this. I'm going to use a variety of colors. We're going to keep um, a temperature, a warm temperature of the painting. And we're going to have the light source coming just like this right here. That would be easy to do up here on this. There, that's the light. I'll draw a little sun up there. Now then, so we know the light's coming this way. It's going to be warm. It's going to be a kind of a confusing painting probably because I'm also going to show you how to use a razor blade to form a whole forest in just a minute. Take about a minute. So we're ready to put on paint now. And we're going to keep it warm, remember? So I'm going to pick up some warm color. And the first color I'm going to pick up is going to be this quinacridone burnt orange. And this is a big old hake brush I'm using. And it really puts some paint down. Now I'm going to change and pick up some of this. I may have to use my other brush. No, that's working just fine. Some of that raw sienna right in that. Wow. Now let's get some of Joe's red. A little more water. And we'll come back in here again with the red. Uh -oh, I don't like those stripes in it, so we'll get those out. And now we're coming down to the house. We're going to do negative painting. And I'm going to pick up that other one inch brush. Take the excess water out of it. Pick up some more of this color and I'm going to come all the way down to this little roof line right there. All right, look at this. Isn't that fun? That's fun to me in, in just the process of negative painting to see if I can do it. Put a little swag in the house roof so it's old and kind of dilapidated. I've added, you can see where I've added a barn back here, way back there. And I'm going to put a little happy little barn there now. We have a predominantly warm painting so far. We'll smooth out some of those things. And we have a hairbrush, hair out of the brush. That's that, that uh, hock, hockey or hakey or hake brush, however you say it. But I like what we've got so far. And now... We're going to wait just a couple of minutes and let this kind of settle in because it's still very wet. And I'll come over here with that little building and I'm going to add some quinacridone burnt scarlet or quinacridone burnt orange. They're just about the same thing. And I'm going to be careful around that roof of the house. There we go. And it's running a little bit over here, you can see, but not bad. And we're going to leave the house white. But we're going to put a shadow on it. And if we do it right now, it's liable to run into everything. So we'll, we'll wait a minute on it and the barn back here. Actually, we could put a little bit of that reddish quinacridone in the barn right now while it's still damp. And we know that the light coming this way so we're going to have to make this side of the silo darker than that side and sure enough it's running so now with that we take the brush dry it take the excess water out of it and lift these things up where it's run into it soften the bottom of this so it's setting on the ground in the ground got a foundation rather than just on top. Oh yeah. This is really fun.
Now I got a little bit over here into the roof line I didn't want to get into. So with this thirsty brush, and by the way, here's what a thirsty brush is. Thirsty brush, you have a tissue in your hand and you clean it and then you blot it and then you blot it in your hand like that. Pull it through. That makes a thirsty brush. That means it will lift out some of the color that you've put in there. So I'll show you that right here and right here. We'll lift out some of that because this side is darker over here where the lights come. This side's going to be darker. So we'll take a little bit out just like that. And there we have it. Now we're going to clean the palette and put in some shadows to give us the light direction that we've put in there, keeping the temperature warm. It's, and it's going to be really easy to keep it warm because I've got so much up here in the sky area. But now I'm going to use some cobalt blue, a beautiful blue color. I love it. And I'm going to put in this eave right back here. I'm going to put an eave in here where the sun's coming through. We're going to have it darker right back in here on that little. This is actually was a root cellar that my grandmother kept potatoes and apple. Oh, it smells so good. I love that color, the way it's blending. So we'll pick up some more of that cobalt blue and make a happy little house out of it. Just like this. That light's coming in there like that. Oh, wow. Isn't that fun? Coming in here the same way right there on that roof. And underneath here, we have a couple of windows we can paint right over them. I'll leave that post there. Add a little more color here, a little more there. And a little bit right there. And the sun's coming through there. And it's making a shadow come this way, and this way, and this way. Isn't that pretty? I love it. And now I want to show you how we're going to, that's a lot of color right there, so I'll add a little water to it. Come down here just like that. Like that, great. And then I want a small flat brush, and this is as small as I've got. So I'll pick up the color and with my thumb and fourth finger, I'll make it a little smaller right there to put this shadow right there. Put the window right there. Oh, look at this. This is so much fun. I know it's just a simple thing, but I enjoy doing a simple thing sometimes. This, this building's gonna be darker on this side, and we may have to wait till that gets a little, but there's a little bit of darker. Now then, we're gonna put some paint in this very wet place, and, and I think I'll do it right over here, a different color, and that, that cobalt blue has been so pretty. I think that's what I'll do. I'm gonna take some of the excess color out of my brush, and with a tissue, I'm going to take some more color out, like that. Pick up some more color now, and come right in here with the begin. Oh, I like that. It's blending. See how that's blending in there? That's wet and wet. Just so much fun. Same color. A little smaller. Evergreen tree, because we have them up here in the mountains close to Boone, North Carolina, everywhere. We used to have um, some fir trees that the aphids got into, and it just ate them up, and they they called hemlock, and they're about gone now, unfortunately. Now we're gonna come in here and define this roof line a little better. This, we want this to be different than this, so we'll come in here like that. You know what we could use here? We could use the palette knife here really easily by mixing up a little bit of this color and pick up the palette knife 
and that's kind of a combination of color in there and holding it like that we come right up in there let's get some more color now we're just about through with what I want to show you so I'm bringing this a little darker because it's closer to the house than this back here And we can do it back here with the painting knife, which is really fun to do. We can make those every, we can bring the hemlocks back. That's what we're doing because it looks like hemlock in there. There we go. Now, we'll pick up the razor blade. You got the light coming this way. It's a warm painting. The direction's just great. And uh, it's about the right time to show you with a single edge, actually called utility blade. You've got to be really careful, they're sharp as can be. And you hold it like this, and you lay it down flat on the paper, and you just kind of wiggle it sideways like that. And look there. See that tree in there? Look at this. This is so much fun. You make a whole forest in no time at all. And we're going to pull a couple of limbs out just like that, using the sharp edge of the point of it down here. And then we'll want one coming across that way and one that way. And then we're going to bring that one on up, limb coming out, and another little tree right down here next to this one. And there we have our forest. I'm going to put in a fence post here and here. A little bit large, but it's okay. We'll put in a window right there with that razor blade. Look at that. Isn't that neat? Let's try and see if we can do it over here. We did. We can put it right there. This door can be there. The window. And that's the way we're going to do it now. Well, we're going to put a mat around it and wait and see what all else we need to do and we'll do it next session. <laughs>